All right, welcome to Coffee with Marcus. In today's show, we will talk about what is happening in markets today, and this will only take us two minutes. Then we will talk about how to place a stock buy order, and I'll show you how to do this in five easy steps. And this is something that many traders are getting wrong, and it costs them a lot of money. Next, if we have time, we will talk about my current trades and how my positions are doing. And after that, I will answer your question. Now, a quick heads up. Today, we have to wrap up after 30 minutes since my daughter Vivian is taking her driving test. And I need to pick her up from school and drive her to her driving test. But hey, as you can see, we have a full program. So let's get started. Oops. <clears throat> All right. So here we go. Let's take a quick look at what is happening in the markets. And today the markets are up, up and away for especially the Nasdaq. Look at the Nasdaq here up, up and away, up one and a half percent. But also uh, the other indices, the SPX is up, uh, well, only a quarter percent. But hey, uh, this looks much more impressive on the chart and also the Dow up today. So well, what is happening today? Well, as you know, there's three things that are moving the markets right now. Number one, it is earnings. And we're pretty much uh, done with earnings. We have a few more companies reporting, but hey, 99% uh, of the companies have been reporting. So that's not what traders can focus on. So what else is driving the markets here? Well, uh, the second thing is the Fed. And uh, last week, there were rumors that they are scaling back their bond buying program. They started it a year ago, uh, basically to support the economy. And now, since they are actually scaling back or talking about, thinking about scaling back, this is where last week we had this scare in the market. Now, third thing that the markets are worrying about is the coronavirus, the Delta variant, other variants and the impact. And today we had news from the FDA. The FDA approved uh, Pfizer's uh, coronavirus vaccine for full approval, no longer an emergency approval, full approval. We see that earlier Pfizer was way up right now, only two and a half percent. So why are the markets celebrating it? Because uh, the markets believe that if uh, there's full approval right now that more people might get vaccinated, which might actually help to contain the virus. And therefore, especially today, travel stocks are up. American Airlines, as you can see, 3.2 percent. Delta Airlines uh, up 2.9 percent. LVS, one of the positions that I have up 5.3 percent today. So this is what the markets are celebrating today. Hey, I promised you it would be only two minutes that we talk about what's happening in the market. So let's move on to the next topic. Let's talk about how to place a stock buy order. So let's talk about how to place a stock buy order in five easy steps. So are you thinking about buying stocks? Well, <laughs> you should because the stock market is making new all time highs and there are tremendous opportunities in the market. So time to buy some stocks, right? But there are a few things to consider. So here's what you need to consider is, first of all, what stock should you buy? And then actually, how do you place an order? What is actually the difference between market orders, stop orders and limit orders? And should you use day orders or GTC orders? And see, if you're new to trading, it can be hard to remember all of these details. And uh, that's why I created this complete tutorial for beginners that explains everything you need to know about buying stocks online in five easy steps. So let's get started. Here are the five steps. And as you can see, step number one, step number one is selecting an online stockbroker. Now, um, when, when buying stocks, if you want to buy a stock, you must have an account with an online broker. Now, if you already have a broker, you can skip ahead to the next steps. There, there will be timestamps in the description of the video. But if you need a broker or you don't know whether your broker is any good, let's talk about it for a moment. Now, the good news is it will only take you 15 minutes to open an account and you will be ready to trade within a day. Now, as you know, there are plenty of online brokers to choose from. So the, the most popular online stock brokers in the US include uh, for example, Robinhood, super popular. We have TD Ameritrade. We have interactive brokers. We have Charles Schwab uh, and many, many others. Uh, so how do you choose the right broker? Well, here are a few things to consider. Number one, trading cost. 
Think about how much you plan to trade and compare some trading costs. You see, some brokers charge you $5 per trade. Yes, they still exist, while most others offer you commission-free trading. If you only place a few trades per year, this won't matter, right? But if you're planning to actively buy and sell stocks, you need to pay attention to these trading costs. But commissions are only one of the criteria that you should consider. You see, for me, it is also important that it is easy to use their platform. After all, you don't want to fumble around when placing a trade. And I want to have some great customer support because when I have a problem, I want to be able to call somebody and talk to them. I do not want to write an email to support and wait for a day to receive an answer. And I also don't want to be in a long waiting line just to hear 156 times, your call is important to us. Please stay on the line until the next customer support specialist is available. <laughs> you get the idea, right? Long story short, the brokers that I personally use are Tastyworks and Tradier. And uh, what we will do today is in order to place a trade, I will show you Tradier's platform. Now, uh, a few weeks ago, I did a video comparing different zero commission brokers, and I'll, I'll link to it in the description so that you can see exactly why I choose the brokers. Okay, that's an, enough about brokers. Let's move on to step number two. Step number two is research the stocks you want to buy. And uh, let, let, let me show you how I pick the best stocks to trade. Now, again, if you already know what stock you want to buy, just skip ahead to the next section. Timestamps are in the description. But uh, let me show you how I do it. So uh, when trading stocks, I use technical analysis. Uh, and I'm using three indicators that you see here at the bottom of the chart. So I use the RSI, I use the stochastics, and I use the MACD. And also, I am using my software, the PowerX Optimizer, to scan 14,000 stocks and ETFs every day to find the ones with the highest probability. Now, if you want to know how exactly I do this, I, I also have another video for you. I'll link to it in the description in which I show you my trading routine in detail. But let's right now focus on placing a trade. So let's say I want to buy shares of Signet Jeweler. This is the chart that you see here on the screen. So it's SIG Signet Jeweler. Here we go. <clears throat> so here's how to do it. Well, first of all, before we can do it, uh, if you switch over here to the broker, the first thing that your broker wants to know is what exactly do you want to trade? So we have to enter the symbol. So that's the easy part here. All we need to do is enter SIG, for example, or if you want to trade Apple, uh, you would enter Apple. Uh, if you want to uh, trade Tesla, you would enter Tesla. You get the idea, but let's stick with the example of SIG. So what do we want to buy? The site that we want to trade is buying. So that's all easy. But now the next question is, how many shares do we want to buy? And uh, so let's talk about this for a moment. <clears throat> Because, you see, most people don't know how to determine the amount of shares to buy. And uh, that's actually critical. It's absolutely crucial because if you buy too many or too few shares, your trades might turn out badly and cost you a lot of money. So let me show you how I do it. And uh, it's a simple two-step approach. So number one, we have to determine the risk per share. So. You have to determine how much you want to risk per share. And this is also called a so-called stop loss. Now, uh, this stop loss is a stock price level at which you admit that you were wrong and now you will sell the stock at a loss. Now, keep in mind that losses are part of our business as traders and the key is to keep your losses small. So let me show you how to do it. There are many, many ways to determine a stop loss and here are two popular approaches. Uh, the first one is that you are using a support level. So you're looking at the chart and uh, you might zoom out a little bit so that you see uh, a few more weeks and you determine a support level. So in our example, we see that, for example, 60 is a pretty good support level. Wouldn't you agree? Like here, maybe even a little bit less like uh, 5750. But uh, right here, we have a pretty good support level. Um, so, because if you're buying the stock and it moves below 60, you were probably wrong and it's time to sell the stock. However, I personally believe that this here 
is way too much risk because you, you would risk like uh, $10 uh, per share. So here's what I like to do. I like to use the so-called average daily range. Uh, and let me write this down. So this is the A. DR, the average daily range to support my stop loss. So the average daily range tells you how much a stock moves on average during the day. And uh, you can easily calculate it by subtracting the low of the day from the high. So high minus low, and then build a simple seven day moving average around it. So um, it, it's a very simple formula that you can put in there. Or if your software has the ATR, the average true range, that is fine too. So in our example here for SIG, the, the ADR yesterday was $3.61. Now we want to give the stock enough room to move throughout the day. And that's why I like to use one and a half times the ADR as a stop loss. Now in our example, one and a half times $3.61 would be $5.42. So if we look at uh, our entry signal here that the PowerX Optimizer gives us based on the indicators and we want to buy to open at 7103, now we need to calculate our stop loss. And our stop loss is 7103 minus what we just calculated, uh, the $5.42. So this means at 6541, we would place a stop loss. So for me, that is a great stop loss level. Let's take a look at the chart and uh, see where it would be. Uh, so we're talking about uh, 65.41, somewhere around here. So, but, but wait, 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 what does all of this have to do with the amount of shares that we want to buy? Well, that's where we need to go to step number two. And really, this is something that most traders get wrong. So this is why I'm spending quite a little bit of time on here. Anyhow, so number two, you want to calculate the number of shares. So as a rule of thumb, you should not risk more than 2% on your account on any given trade. So let's say you have a $10,000 account and you multiply this by 2%, that would be risking $200 uh, on this trade. That is the maximum loss that you want to experience. So how exactly can you make sure you're not losing more? Well, this is by adjusting the number of shares that you buy, this is how you limit the risk. Well, and here's how we do it. We take the overall risk, which is the $200 and divide this by the stop loss amount. And uh, the stop loss amount was $5 and 42 cents. And if we do this, we arrive at 36 and something, and we're taking 36 shares. So since we plan to exit the trade when the stock moves to uh, 65, what do we say, 65, 61, somewhere around there, we would lose $5.42 per share. And if we take this times 36, so this would be exactly 195.12. Check my math. Anyhow, is this making sense? So let's jump to our trading platform and enter the information that we have thus far. So again, every broker is asking for the same information. And we already talked about we have the stock SIG, um, we have we want to buy it and the number of shares is 36. So next, see, we're almost there, but we have to specify at what price we want to buy the stock. And uh, this is where right now we are on step number four. Let's just bring up the steps here again. So uh, step number four is, okay, should you use a market stop or limit orders. So these are the orders that you can use. Uh, let's actually jump back here onto our trading platform so that you see exactly uh, what these are. So as you can see, there are four different orders, market, limit, stop, and start limit. So let, let me explain each one as well as the pros and cons. And uh, let's actually start here with uh, a market order. So when we choose, uh, let me actually, choose here a market order because when I do this, here is what will happen. Market order. You see the price disappears um, because a market order is an instruction to your broker or this trading platform to buy the stock at the asking price. So let's take a look at the asking price here of, uh, of SIG. So right now, see up here, there's the, the bid and there's the ask. 
And uh, if you enter a market buy of 36 shares, your trade would immediately be executed at the current uh, ask price. In this example, it would be at $70.87. So the advantage of this order, you get filled immediately and you're now the proud owner of 36 shares of Signet Jeweler if you want to trade this. Now, the disadvantage is that you had zero control over this uh, trade price other than watching the markets and waiting for the right moment. So this is why I personally prefer a stop order. So let's talk about a stop order. Uh, a stop order is an order to buy or also sell a stock uh, at the prevailing market price. If the market price hits a specific level and this level is called right here, either the stop price or also the trigger price. Now, uh, the, the, the most popular type here is just a simple uh, stop order. And uh, this is often used as a stop loss order, which is triggered by a loss and then it will turn into a market order. But, but you can also use this order to enter a trade as a specified price. So let's say you want to buy, say, uh, once the price moves above the high of the previous day to make sure that there's enough momentum to move this stock higher. Now, in our example, if we go back to the PowerX Optimizer, the PowerX Optimizer tells us exactly to buy it at $71.03. And this is one cent above the previous day's high. So here's what we would do. We would go to our trading platform, place a stop and um, actually specify the price, the stop price here of $71.03. So here is what will happen when you're using a stop order, right? It means that as soon as the stock price, which right now is at $72.82, as soon as it reaches $71.03, then buy 36 shares of SIG, Signet Jeweler, uh, at the market price. Now, the advantage of using a stop order is that we don't have to be glued in front of our computer all day waiting for SIG to move up and hit our price. So we could go to the beach. However, the disadvantage of a stop order is that it is not guaranteed that our trade gets filled at the specified price. Because uh, let's see what would happen if SIG would jump up, would gap up to, uh, let's say, at $75 right here. In this case, we would automatically get filled at $75 since we are trading above our trigger price of $71.03. Making sense thus far? Okay, so how can we avoid getting filled at a much higher price? Well, this is where we go back and we could use a stop limit order. Now, a stop limit order is effectively a stop order that includes another price, not only the trigger price, there's the trigger price, but also a limit price, which defines the maximum price at which you're willing to buy the stock. So let me give you an example. Let's say we want to buy SIG once it's moving above 7103, but we don't want to pay more than 7110 for the stock. In this case, we would place a stop limit order at 7110. So we specify two prices. The first is the trigger price, which says as soon as it moves above there, what is the maximum price that we are uh, that we want to pay for this. So this way, by placing a stop limit orders, we only get filled if SIG moves above 7102. So if it moves to 7103 or above, and we will get filled at 7110 or lower. So by using a stop limit order, we avoid getting filled at a price we don't want. For example, if it is gapping all the way up to 75. Now the disadvantage, if the stock rises above 71.3 and quickly jumps to 71.20, we might not get filled. But uh, this is a, a very unlikely scenario. Now, in my experience, you're getting filled at the price you want with a stop limit order here, nine out of 10 times. And that's why I personally like to use stop limit orders for my entry. So uh, let's quickly talk about the last order type. And the last order type that we have here is a simple limit order. Now, a limit order uh, only gives you one price, and uh, this is the maximum price that you're willing to buy. Uh, for example, if you want to buy SAG uh, only if it is trading below $70. So uh, we take a, a look at the chart here. Oops. 
Let me just bring up the chart here again. And we say, yeah, you know what? Right now, um, we, we say it's trading at $70.98. We only want to buy it if it is trading below $70. In this case, uh, we can use a simple limit order and uh, we specify a price of $70. So um, I like to use this type of order for my profit target. So let, let me give you just a, a very brief uh, summary here of the order types before we move on to the last step of placing a stock buy order. So uh, first of all, for my entries, whenever I enter an order for my entries, I like to use stop limit orders when I'm placing stock trades, right? For my uh, stop loss, which is exiting with the loss, I like to use a simple stop order. And for my profit target, for a profit taking order, this is where I would use a limit order. So typically uh, I never use a, a market order. So we talked about this, don't like this one, since it doesn't give me any control about the execution of the trade. This making sense thus far? Okay, if so, click on like. And then let's talk about the last step, the duration of the order. And there's day orders, GTC or GTD orders. And uh, th these are three different durations when placing a buy stock order. So uh, let's uh, jump back here and let's take a look at these. So the last thing that we need to specify is actually right here. As you can see, day or GTC is here the standard order. So, so what does this mean? Well, if you specify uh, an order as a day order, the order will be executed today during market hours or it expires automatically at the end of the day. As an example, if uh, we would place uh, a stop order here, let's go back here and uh, let's say, let's just actually place a stop limit order at uh, 71 uh, 10 and uh, we specify it as a day order. So it, it will get filled if the price today moves above 7103. And if it doesn't, then the order is automatically canceled after the markets close. And I like to use this, the day order for my entries, because this way I know that I'm getting filled today or I can look at the stock again tomorrow and decide if I still want to buy it. Now let's talk about another one. This is the GTC order. Now GTC stands for good till cancelled. And uh, he here's what that means. Uh, when you set an order as a GTC, it means that this order will stay in effect until it's either filled or you change or cancel your order because you can cancel an order at any time. So this order is perfect for exits. So these are the stop loss orders and profit taking orders. Because when using a GTC order, it will remain active until the stop loss or profit target is hit or until you cancel it manually. So let's just briefly talk about uh, the, the last order that we have here. So the, the last order type is GTD and this stands for good till date. And when you specify GTD order, it means that the order will stay in effect until either the expiration date or until it's filled or until you change or cancel the order. So this type of order is useful if you decide to buy a stock for a certain price, but only if you get filled for this week, as an example. So if you would place an order to buy SIG here uh, at a price of 7103 stop GTD until Friday, in this case, you would either get filled if SIG moves above 7103 before Friday or the order is automatically canceled. So, um, well, these are basically the five steps. So let's uh, just briefly recap here. As you can see, there are a few things that you need to pay attention to when placing an order to buy a stock, but it's, it's really not that complicated. I recommend that you practice it on a simulator first uh, to get familiar with the different order types and uh, also, yeah, limit orders, day orders, GTC orders. And hey, if you would like to know how I personally trade these crazy markets, then uh, here are two videos for you, hopefully popping up right now. One of them is explaining the PowerX strategy and the other one is explaining the wheel strategy in detail. Take a look at these and I will see you in the next video. So click on one of these videos right now. All right, wow.
Okay, we, we went through this quickly, uh, but hey, I thought this was super, super important um, because many traders are making mistakes here and uh, we, we only have five minutes left. So um, let's see if there are any questions that we can uh, that we can answer. And uh, somebody says, uh, they, uh, the PL chart doesn't look very good on SIG. Yeah, I just used this as an example today because honestly, the other stocks that popped up today looked even worse. So I, I just used this as an example. Please don't trade it uh, by no means. And uh, yeah, Jake says, I love GTD orders for profit taking orders for the wheel. Absolutely. This is asking, uh, hey, your daughter did well on a driving exam. She's about to take it. It's in an hour from now, so I need to wrap it up here in just a few minutes. So we have a few minutes to answer some of your questions. And then I need to pick her up from school and she will take her driving exam. So we shall see. All right. So um, Jamie said, uh, you said in one of your videos, oh my gosh, you got really, really big here. Let me see. Ah, can't make this much smaller. That is okay. I'll do it next time. Anyhow, said in one of your videos that you like to play value stocks. So would like to know how to identify value stocks. I will do another coffee with Marcus with this. Absolutely. So no worries about that. So good to see everybody here. Yeah, and uh, sorry, for, sorry for the little bit shorter coffee with Marcus here today. Again, super, super important. You don't want to leave your daughter waiting at the school, right? So, uh, let me just go and pick her up and uh, let her take the driving test. Wish her the best. Anyhow, uh, I will see you uh, in the next video. And until then, take a look at the other videos that hopefully should be popping up right now. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon.